Hey guys, this is Arsenal Giants PS3, and this is episode 8 of season 3 of our FIFA 12 Sunderland Manager Mode commentary. So, carrying on with the month of October, and we still have our three matches to play. So, first of all, we have the away match against West Bromwich Albion, followed by the home game against Swansea City, and then last of we have the Carling Cup tie against Aston Villa. I'm not sure whether that is the quarterfinal or the semi-final, but I'm pretty sure it is the quarterfinal because we haven't played that many matches in the Carling Cup. So, in the Premier League, we are two points behind the league leaders, Liverpool, with 18 points, and also, as was voted the goal of the episode for last episode was the Seth Young goal to equalise 2-2 against Bolton Wanderers. But anyway, moving on to our first match against West Bromwich Albion, and we're pretty much starting with Fernandinho and Lukaku up front, as we do normally. Not too many changes at all to the starting lineup. Uh, West Brom have made quite a few changes, but nothing really interesting or of note and honestly. They still have Shane Long up front. So we start off the game quite well. Lukaku has a header, hits the top of the crossbar, almost comes off the goalkeeper and goes into the back of the net, but the, the defender manages to clear it. Cameron Jerome there has a chance for West Brom. In all honesty, this game didn't have too many chances. Fernandinho had a brilliant chance there, trying to catch it on the volley, but couldn't quite get it in. It's a pretty crazy scramble in the box here for the ball, but we do manage to clear it out. West Brom do have one chance just on the very edge of half-time. I think that's uh, Jerome Thomas had a shot there, but it was well saved by Courtois. And at half-time, it was West Brom nil, Sunderland nil. So very little action in the first half, or very important action. But starting off in the second half, I do not know what happened there. I think Courtois went to save that, came off Obono and then bounced off Shane Long. However, that did count as an Obona own goal, so that kind of sucks. But we get straight back into the match just four minutes after Lukaku and James Milner com combining quite well there. It was a sweaty pass across, but I'm going to take any goal against the AI because they are pretty hard. Um, West Brom then had a string of chances. Quadra makes a pretty good save there. And Peter Oddenwingy came on for Shane Long, running through and goal. Nathaniel Klein tries to catch up with him. And in all honesty, I don't think Quadra had to jump in the air so high to stop that. But I'm just happy that he stopped it from going in the back of the net. It's a pretty good save nonetheless. And I do not know what West Brom were doing there. The whole line there just totally stopped defending Lukaku but his shot was well saved but in the 74th minute Davin got glazed off to setting on outside of the edge of the box and he yet again smashes it in to put us 2-1 ahead. That was another great goal by Seth, Seth, by Seth Ignion, sorry and he is an awesome player. So just for the final couple of minutes I decided to bring on Cohen for Shakiri and at full time it was 2-1 to Sunderland against West Brom. So following that 2-1 win over West Brom and the three points we got, we are moving on to our second match of the episode against Swansea City. And instead of playing Fernandinho, he's been a bit crappy recently, he's not been too great. So instead of playing him, we're going to be playing David and Gog ahead of him. And in the eighth minute, we sort of start out quite averagely, but we pass it to David and Gog in the, in the centre of the box. And he kills in a beautiful effort to put us 1-0 up, so it was a great decision to play David and Gog over Fernandinho. As Fer Fernandinho's form has been quite crappy recently and he hasn't been able to do that much. Now I don't know how this happened but Bolton managed to, to track back and tackle Scott Sinclair. I don't, know, I don't know whether Sinclair was like slowing up or something but as you saw there Davin and Gog had very little support so he just tried to chip the keeper. Wasn't the, the greatest choice in all honesty. Lukaku had a shot pretty well saved there by Michelle Vorm. So a good shot and Scott Sinclair went for another shot but it hit the outside of the net and did not go in. So at half time it was 1 0 to Sunderland. So so far heading on two three points. And Quatois makes a pretty good save here with his leg. I cannot stress enough how much of an awesome player he is to have. He is just such an epic. I mean he cost me so much but he's an epic player. So just going to make a substitution bringing on Fernandinho for Lukaku who's played a lot of matches this season. And a lot of people are asking me to play Shakiri more but I am always playing him. That was just an example of what usually happens. He has a shot and he just flies over. But Scott Sinclair does actually equalise for Swansea in the 68th minute. Courtois could have done a little bit better there in honesty and yet again here is Shakiri running inside the box go for a shot and it is a shot pretty well saved by Michelle Vorm but never really troubling him in honesty and that's the problem that Sh Shakiri has but look at this now in the 87th minute Sessingon picks up the ball and repeats what he did last episode puts us 2-1 ahead 
and he is just such a crucial player at getting those three points in the last minute. So at full time was 2-1 to Sunderland, so another three points there, and it is just so brilliant to have him. But Shakiri isn't feeling so sharp, so he's not going to be included in the next match. So moving on to our third and final match of this episode against Aston Villa in the Carling Cup. And I'm pretty sure that this is the quarter-final and not the semi-final, as at the same time as this match, there were three other matches being played. So that definitely means that it was the quarter-final. So moving on to the actual match in itself, and Lukaku has a pretty good shot, well saved there by Shea Given. I'm pretty sure it's Shea Given. I didn't actually see Aston Villa's squad. In all honesty, not much actually happened. You saw there, there was a tackle by Obonna. I think it was Obonna anyway. Cotua makes a bit of a... Well, a hash of that in honesty, but it does manage to, to pay off quite well. It was only until the 32nd minute that Jermaine Beckford puts Aston Villa 1-0 ahead. It wasn't really a great goal in honesty, and my defence really should have done a lot better in that situation. They sort of allowed him through, and Aston Villa really should take a 2-0 lead there. I don't know who had that shot, but it was an awful shot. Cotua was not... A a available to stop that in all honesty and he really should have put that bit in the back of the net so at half time I decided to bring on setting on for James Milner as James Milner is really out of stamina and it was only intended to play him for the half ma half of this match anyway but a penalty is given to Aston Villa and he receives a yellow card you see a replay there it was actually a clean tackle in all honesty but it was slightly from behind but Mignolet makes a good save there I apologise it wasn't Cotua earlier, it was Mignolet, I don't know why I said Cotua, I always play a slightly reserved side in the Carling Cup, and James McLean got quite lucky that his crossing came off somebody and it equalised for us against Aston Villa, and it really put us straight back into the match, Obama makes a pretty crucial tackle there, and it runs to Mignolet, but straight after that we literally turn the tide of this match, Evington does a through ball to Lukaku, who puts it in the back of the net to put us 2-1 up, pretty good finish there but it was a very good through ball by Everington I just don't really like playing him in the Premiership I, I'd much rather play him in the Carling Cup and I decided to make a few substitutions just to really kill off this match because our stamina was quite low Davin and Gog had a shot pretty well saved there by Shea Given but the, in the 90th minute pretty much when the match was over James McLean does a perfect through ball to Davin and Gog and look at that finish there that was a perfect finish just toe punts it into the bottom corner Pretty, n pretty nice finish from David and Gog, and at full time it was 3-1 to Sunderland against Aston Villa. So that was a very good result, and we are into the next round of the Carling Cup. And because Shakiri wanted a rest, his his stamina has increased as of giving him that rest. So at the end of this episode, the Premiership table looks like this: we are in second place with 24 points. Quite unrealistic, but at the same time, nothing's ever going to be realistic because Sunderland have been taken over. And just a quick update at F Fulham: they have got out of the relegation zone and have 11 points. So guys, now leave a comment on which goal you think should be goal of the episode either the Sessegnon goal or the David and Gog goal versus Aston Villa so please leave a comment on which one you think should be goal of the month and now for player of the month and I don't have too many clips of him but I'm pretty sure that that Sessegnon should be player of the month surely because he actually won us four points single-handedly so thanks guys for watching and hope you enjoyed this episode